Well, it's Q&A time, and uh, while you're thinking about your question, if you want to turn for a minute to Matthew 18, someone came, and while the, uh, which life group was that that was eating that glorious potluck in the fellowship center? I saw you there, Long Johns. What life group is that? The Wisdom's Disciples, while they were having this incredible, sumptuous feast, I had the longest line of, uh, uh, in the visitor reception, and one of the longer questions was about the morning message. And I thought, why don't you just come and stand at a microphone and ask that? But they couldn't. And so it says in Matthew 18, if you look, and it says uh, in verse 35, this was their question. Uh, or this is where I took them for their question. They said, uh, what do we do if we have been uh, severely injured by someone, and they just went through all the the things, uh, the abuse they went through. They said, we're supposed to walk up and find them and, and look them in the eye and say, I forgive you for, and they spent a long time telling me everything that people did to them. I said, no, it doesn't actually say that. It doesn't say that, that you go to the person that hurt you and that you, without them wanting it or even caring, that you remind them of everything they did and say, I forgive you for that. Notice what it actually says in verse 35. So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you, and what are the next three words? From his heart. Yeah, but the, it's preceded by from your heart. You see, the you cannot have a relationship restored with someone that doesn't want it restored. But you can, from your heart, forgive them. You can from, I mean, you've read all the stories. You've read the, the stories of the Nazi people that Christians have gone to and said, uh, you know, I forgive you, and they wouldn't receive it. And you've heard the stories of the Japanese guards that, that people have gone and they wouldn't receive it. it. It doesn't say in the Bible we're supposed to force them for reconciliation. But, but from our side, uh, few people heard Jesus as he was being nailed. I mean, he was saying, Father, forgive them. It was a prayer that he was offering. So don't think that, that to forgive people, we have to go around and find every one of them that have maligned, accused, uh, harmed, abused, whatever us. And, and confront them and say, I forgive you for everything you've done. They might not want to be forgiven. They might not even care. It starts from our heart, and, and there's such a release that takes place in our lives. The first thing you do is you feel a burden lifted from you. Then if they be under the conviction of the Holy Spirit, in fact, in this one, the, the line this morning, I said, do these people feel bad at all? They said, not a bit, but we do. It's just eating us up. I said, if you release your animosity, your retribution desired, your, your infected hurt over how they have ruined, and they, ha I mean, they could talk for hours how ruined their lives are, but the people that ruined them are happy as clams, going through life, sail along, having a blast. And I said, if you release them in your heart, verse 35, and then begin to pray for them that have despitefully used you, then, just like it says in Romans 12, uh, 19 to 21, that Dwight had us read, or he read to us off the screen, then the Lord will take over. And remember, God will right all wrongs, either now, in time, or then, later, when they're standing before the judgment, great white throne judgment, if they're not a believer, and he reminds them of all the evil and that they are going to pay for that. See, God has recorded, he does keep a record of every evil. Uh, in, in school right now, the, the kids are watching, and I'm watching with them some World War II things, and we just saw the 33,000 uh, Romanian, no less, uh, Jews that were herded into a pit and Himmler shot them all one at a time 
and he got blood on himself, and that's why he invented the gas chamber. He said, this is too barbaric to kill them with bullets and get blood on you. We will gas them instead to be humane. <laughs> that's how a perverted mind thinks. And, and, and what I thought of that is that, that those soldiers that systematically shot 33,000 bullets and systematically butchered those innocent people, God knows every one of them what they did and they will stand in front of him and far better than the Jew retaliating and shooting them, they will pay eternally for what they did unless they call the name of the Lord. Then Jesus is accused for killing them and suffers for that murder. But the key for this morning that they ask is, do I have to go track down all my abusers uh, and confront them and publicly apologize or, or tell them I forgive them? That is not indicated in the scriptures. What is indicated is from our heart. We forgive them and give the vengeance, as it says in uh, Romans 12, and for those of you that... Um, weren't thinking about what we were reading there that it applies when it says in Romans 12 uh, repay no one evil for evil verse 17 verse 19 don't avenge rather give place to wrath that's God's wrath see when we forgive when we remove the 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 claws from our hurt we we pull our claws in kind of like a cat you know how a cat can pull in its uh its claws, unless you declaw it, but we get declawed at salvation, and we, we don't any longer have, have wrath that clings to people, but when we release them, it's to the Lord, and in verse 19 it says, give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. So what are we supposed to do? Well, when the abuser, verse 20, comes to us and is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. See, that's the only way that, that uh, this type of forgiveness works. So in abstentia, that was the answer to the question that usually if someone asks me something in the visitor line, probably four or five other people have the same question.